Yeah. So here we are then. It's uh, Space Assassin this evening. It is indeed. Let me read you the back of the book. Okay. Looming above your home planet is the vast hulk of the starship Vandervecken. Aboard a crazed scientist, a crazed scientist, Sirius is Cyrus. Cyrus, Cyrus. This isn't going well. Let's start again. Aboard the crazed, <laughs> aboard the crazed scientist Cyrus is planning to unleash a gruesome experiment upon your world, which will destroy all life as it is known, leaving only hideous mutations in its wake. You are an assassin, and your mission is to stop him before it is too late. Two dice, a pencil, a razor, blah, 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 blah. So you are the assassin. I'm the, the so I, I, space assassin. I am the titular space assassin. Very good. Very good. Uh, well, I know that there's a f um, like Goose is with us, a uh, regular on this stream, but for those who are new around these parts, it, this is pretty straightforward. Andy here, my colleague in the, f in the fine sartorial. Uh, I mean, the, the lad's drippy. Look at that. Look at that. Have you, got, have you still got your bum bag? Show your bum bag off as well. Look at that. I can't compete. I can't compete. Treat, mate. I've, I've got my nice smart polo shirt on for you all. And Andy's bringing the, the height of sartorial flair to the stream this evening. Uh, however, if you are new around these parts, Andy is uh, our narrator this month. He has a copy of the book. He's going to be reading the... Um, the content, uh, and I will be playing the role of the character. Um, so um, we'll just I'm going to be take turns month on month, month off to swap those roles and uh, play the role of narrator or player. Uh, so Andy's going to narrate. I'll be the player. Um, I'll be rolling the dice digitally. Sometimes I'll be asking you guys, calling upon you guys to roll on my behalf or on Andy's behalf. And when I do, very straightforward. If you just tap exclamation D6 or exclamation D12 into the chat, and that will set off the auto dice roller, which will look a little something like this. There's exclamation D6. And there is exclamation D12. So if I give you a shout and ask you to roll for me, uh, first, fast as fingers first, get your exclamation D6s and D12s ready to go uh, to take some rolls on our behalf. Otherwise, we're just going to plough through it. Wish us luck. Let's see if we can't make it our third full finish. Do yeah. It. Right. Let's get through the... Uh... The basics then. So in this book, you play the part of a futuristic assassin sent to capture a tyrannical despot. What does despot mean? Like an evil tyrant. Okay, tyrannical despot. Sound very evil. Uh, bent on the destruction of your world. You must find the way through the mazes of hazards of this giant spacecraft of the Van der Vecken and eventually confront and capture him. Before you can begin, however, you must determine the strengths and weaknesses and select your weapons and armour. Right. For this, you will require two dice and a pencil to record scores on your adventure sheet, blah, blah, blah. As it's possible that you will not complete your mission on the first attempt, you may wish to take photocopies of the adventure sheet for future use. Uh, looks like we've got some... Ooh. We've got some, some stats different to roll up. Yeah, we've got... Well, you can you can select your weapons and stuff. That's exciting. So All let's right. do the normal bits first. Just, so you just let me put let me just put this out there. Have a think, folks. In chat, I like to name my characters. Just uh, see if you can come up with a nice name for my guy, uh, for my space assassin. All right, what's be what's be first stat then? Right. So your ability to fight, withstand damage, and escape from tricky situations is determined by your skill, stamina, and luck. Uh, so the first one is your skill score. You uh, have six, and then you roll a die and add that to it. So roll a die and add six. Okay. Uh, five. Nice. It's a good start. That puts me at 11. Uh, yeah, look away, Sham69. No problem. We have got your stamina score, which is two dice plus 12. Okay. Oh, cocked dice. I'll re-roll. Oh, how was it? Did you do digital cock dice? Oh, that's oh nice. that was such, could have been such a good roll, and now it's not. Uh, so 12, 17. That's not great, is it? Uh, not good at all. And then your luck, which is one dice, add six. One dice, add six. Okay. 
Hey! That no. bastard. I'll take that. Oh, sorry, I accidentally activated the second dice roll then. <laughs> uh, on occasions, you'll be called upon to test your luck when this roll occurs. Roll two dice. Blah, 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 blah. Tell me test your luck. Reduce your luck by one. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Armour. Here's more exciting armor. than your armour. Being a high technological assassin, you are qu equipped with the latest in protective equipment. This nice. being a sensomatic armoured pressure suit, which may absorb damage from blasters, grenades, or similar weapons. To determine the strength of your armour, roll one die and add six to the result, and enter that total under the appropriate section on your adventure sheet. Right, see you. Oh, not bad. Ten. Whenever you engage in a gunfire duel with an opponent and receive a hit, you roll two dice. If the result is equal to or less than your current armor score, your opponent's shot has not penetrated your armor and doesn't wound you. Oh. If the result exceeds your current armor score, then your opponent's shot penetrates your armor and wounds you like a wound. Uh, each time you roll two dice to determine if the opponent's shot has penetrated your armor, reduce your armor point by one. Because it's got a bit of damage on it. Yeah. All right, here we go. This is an exciting thing. Uh, so you're going to roll a dice in a minute, and that's going to represent how many points you have to spend on weapons and to gain additional armor points. Then there's a little shopping list here. Right, Roll cool. a d6. Roll a d6. Yeah. All right. Three. Okie doke. So these are the current uh, weapon slash armor list. So you've got an electric lash that costs one. Ooh, you've uh. got an assault blaster that costs three. Oof. You've got a grenade. They are one each. You've got a gravity bomb at three. Uh, and then you can also add additional points to your armor at a half a point per point. Half a cost per point. Let's do the last. Shall I, read a, little, shall I no. read a little bit more about it? So, no, Does note it you give... must note that you must buy either an electric lash or an assault blaster before purchasing anything else. So, if you roll a three, you may acquire one assault blaster or an electric lash, a grenade, and two arm points. The effects in combat of the different weapons are as follows: the electric lash is a small handgun that projects an electric pulse and clicks inflicting two points of damage on your opponent's stamina. Your Assault Blaster is a heavy-duty military weapon which inflicts various amounts of damage. The amount is determined by rolling one die and deducting the result from your opponent's stamina. Thus, the Assault Blaster will cause from one to six points of damage against the target's stamina. The Grenade is an area effect weapon which will cause varying amounts of damage to all of your opponents in the blast area. The amount of damage is determined by rolling one die for each target and deducting that result from the target. Stamina grenades can be used only when the book allows. A gravity bomb is a heavy-duty demolition bomb. Do you know what? Doors I'm, I'm going to make this really quick. Project. I'm just going to pay all three and have the heavy-duty blaster. Yeah, the assault blaster. Right, chuck that on your yeah. list. Just going all in on that. A gravity bomb consists of a microscopic black hole suspended in time a time stasis field. When a stasis field is switched off at the detonation, the black hole sucks in and annihilates everything within 10 foot radius. The black hole then evaporates into hyperspace, leaving the blast area completely safe. That's badass. It is pretty badass, but I can just anticipate there will be one of those things where I'll be like, can I use my grenade? And there'll be no instruction to do uh, so. The whole book. Yeah. Whereas the gun, I can just shoot shit. So that shoots it. So with the assault blaster, I've got a roll of dice, and I take that off my opponent's stamina. Yeah. Right. Fighting is normal, as all the other books. Gunfire. The combat sequences for blasters, grenades, and electric lashes are as follows. If you're instructed by the book that it is possible to throw a grenade, you may do so. Right. Uh, after throwing a grenade, if any of your opponents are still alive, you engage them in gunfire. The gunfire combat round is conducted as follows. Roll two dice. If the result is greater or equal to your skill, you have missed. If the result is less than your skill, you have hit your opponent and inflict damage on it. Okay, so it's just basically a skill test to see if you've hit or not. Yeah. That's easy. 
If it's still alive, then your fire will be returned. Roll two dice. If the result is greater or equal to your opponent's skill, your opponent's missed. Okay, so then they, they do the same on their skill test. But you get to check your armor because you're a super star assassin. <laughs> I'm starting to understand why maybe this one wasn't reprinted. <laughs> You're faced by more than one opponent, you must direct your fire against the first listed until it is killed, then change to the second listed, and so on. If you're involved in a gunfire battle without a weapon, the amount of damage you inflict on your opponent will be one point per hit. You're an ex as you are an expert in unarmed combat as well. Yes, of course I am. Um, <clears throat> right, you've got pep pills Ooh. instead of meals. Right. Uh, I'll look at you. I certainly do stamina points. This is by taking pet pills. Pill scores five points. Each pill, pill scores five points of your stamina and can be taken at any time. And you start with four pills. Four pep pills. Roger that. Uh... Sound okay. Pills, armor, blah, 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 blah. Sound. Right. Right. So We're rocking. We're rocking. Are you ready for your mission briefing? Yes, please, sir. Lone space assassin. Yep, I'm all ready. Do I need to keep a map for this one? I do, don't I? Uh, yeah, I thought so. Yeah. So, for some time, Cyrus, tyrannical ruling scientist of Odd, your local sector, has been harassing your home planet with his warped minions. Destructive robots and evil creatures almost certainly of mutant origin. His most, un his, his most usual crime has been to descend upon your planet and kidnap inno innocent victims upon whom it is re reputed, reported uh, he practices his malign experiments and surgery. In any event, his victims are never seen again. again. Now, however, word has been received that he intends to use your entire world for one gruesome biological experiment in which he will cover the surface of the planet with radioactive isotopes while showering deadly viruses upon all living creatures. The time has obviously come to stop him. To this end, the authorities have appealed to the Planetary Assassins Guild, which has selected you to penetrate into Cyrus's huge ship, the Van der Vecken, capture him, bring him to justice. So armed with the latest and deadliest weapons, trained in 27 different schools of alien and human martial arts, protected by the best in sensomatic armoured pressure suits, you set Obviously. off searching for the Van der Vecken through the local star systems and eventually catch up with it in a relatively isolated system some light years from your home world. It seems to be in the process of refuelling and taking on supplies. You decide that your best bet is to smuggle yourself on board the ship's supply shuttle and let that take you to the Van der Vecken. Right. Did I just say they hired an assassin to capture him? Capture him. Uh, they hired an assassin to, <laughs> to do to that. To capture him and bring him <laughs> to justice. Right. Okay. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Hire a, a hitman to capture him. Um <laughs> Capture him with a gravity bomb, that's right, yeah. <laughs> so here we go. After one big long bit of text, what we need is another nice long bit of text. So, secreting yourself aboard the Vatavec and the supply shuttle, you travel from the planet's surface to dock with the main ship. As the shuttle approaches the enormous spacecraft, you clamber into an emergency escape airlock and await the sound of contact. You check your space suit and weapons, then rest your hand upon the door release its hair trigger mechanism ready to snap down and hurl you into the void. In your headset, you can hear the ship's computer counting off the seconds until contact. When it reaches zero, you pull the door release and fly out low over the Van der Vecken's silver hull. Whilst behind you, the shuttle rests like a tiny dart behind the bloated ovoid of its mother ship. Like the descriptive wow. words in that one. As you skim a few metres over the hull, you notice a small iris airlock your target ahead of you protruding slightly like a black disc 
Throwing out a magnetic clamp, you bring yourself to a halt, floating lazily over the airlock. Yeah. Your shadow casts darkly in front of you. After a few deft moments on the airlock mechanism, the iris dilates. You step inside, seal the entrance, and fill the airlock with air. You are in the Van der Vecken. Stepping out of the airlock, you find yourself at the end of a short corridor, which is blocked in front by an impassable security door. Each wall has a small maintenance hatch across which is, le is which the legend caution is boldly stenciled. On the steel floor by the security door is a small pile of what seems to be organic refuse. Shit, basically. Yeah. Uh, if you have a gravity bomb, <laughs> you could use it to blast oh, your way well, through come the security on. door. Otherwise, you could examine the left or right maintenance hatch or take a look through the pile of refuse. So you can't blow up the door. So you can look at the left hatch, the right hatch. Or dig through the shit. The, uh, the pile of poop on the floor. I, um, he who dares and all that, I'm going to investigate the shit. Look in the poo for a key. Absolutely, Rob. That's what we're going to do. <sighs> so. Although I did not have any gloves on my equipment list. Ooh, okay, the pile of refuse on closer examination turns out to be the body of a tiny hunchback alien critter. Oh. Rags that were once clothed wrapped its skin and its six bony limbs lie tangled beneath. Trail of blood indicates that it must have crawled out of the right-hand maintenance hatch. Rolling the creature over, you notice that it is an electronic device clasped in one hand. Its finger is on the button and bright wires lead up the arm and disappear into the remnants of a sleeve. Will you remove this device from the body or leave it alone? <laughs> I mean, come on. Uh, last page will read, if you've got poo on your hands, he surrenders immediately. Yeah. <laughs> Fighting fantasy moon logic. What do you reckon, chat? Do I remove the device? I've been bitten by this stuff before in the, in the first few minutes. Go on, I'll try and remove the device. Okay, so you want to remove the device from the body. The device is a small black square with a large red button set into it. The wires lead from it attached to a portable power source. Nothing happens when you press the button. Why would you press the button? <laughs> and, as you can see, several <laughs> other places where some other widget is meant to be plugged in. Right. You deduct that the device is incomplete. So you put it in your pack. Leaving the alien, you will, exa will you examine the left maintenance hatch or the right maintenance hatch? Right, well, he came from the right one. Wasn't it, it went from the right, yeah, and uh, we may find the other part of this device in there. So let's go off to the right. Clever, clever thinking. Well, you know, I'm not just a bearded face. This ha hatch opens easily and reveals a long, dark access tunnel crammed with conduits and aluminium lattice work, cutting through the ship. You climb into it and work your way slowly forwards, coming eventually to another maintenance hatch through which you can hear a muffled, gurgling voice. The tunnel leads it on into the darkness. Do you open the hatch or continue down the tunnel? Let's, let's open the hatch. Open the hatch. You gotta always open the door. Always open the door. The hatch leads into a small lockup occupied by a faceless humanoid robot armed with an assault blaster and guarding two cells. The gurgling voice you hear is emanating from the first of these. The robot does not seem to have noticed your intrusion. Will you ignore the room and continue up the tunnel? Will you attempt to destroy the robot? Alternatively, you could attract the robot's attention by try and try to engage in conversation concerning what it is guarding. No, for that, let's just shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> the subtlety of the space assassin, I like it. <laughs> Just, you know, I'm the best at what I do. Space assassin is going to assassinate, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, as you have the hatch... OK, as you have the hatch for cover, you may lob a grenade into the machine. What? <laughs> Fuck it up. You don't. You can't. No. I'm just so going to shoot guard... him with my massive assault blaster, please. Guard robot, skill seven, stamina six. Right. It doesn't meant to say if it's a gunfight or not. Skill seven. So am I just, it's just straight old fight then, is it? 
looks like it. I'm just going to check gunfight. I can't, can I not get a shot off before he notices me? I thought that was the whole point of him, you know, okay, not noticing me. <laughs> the gunfire combat round is conducted as follows. No, I'm guessing it tells us if it's a gunfight. Well, one would hope, although that's disappointing because I'd have liked to have got, you know. Yeah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah blah. exactly, Rob. A, a quick headshot. Right, so he is skill seven and stamina six. Seven and six. He said he had a gun. He, he does have a gun, yeah. He's got a, he does have a gun. Oh, yeah. mine. I might be wrong, but I mean, it, it doesn't say we're having a gunfight. That's fine. That's fine. What is it? Uh, skill then, yeah? I forgot how uh, to yes. fights. <laughs> Two dice. Whoever's got the highest plus their skill wins the combat. Okay, cool. Meow. What I got here? Uh, 18 for me. Uh, 14. So that's two down. Well, I've got my assault blaster, so do I not roll my um, thing now to see whether I... That was gunfights, wasn't it? That's just in gunfights. Gun fights and hand to hand. Gunfights is when you you do the skill test and then you do the damage from your gun. And then hand to hand is normal. I mean, okay. I mean, that's fine. That's just standard fighting fantasy, then, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It does have that. Like it is standard. And it, it doesn't tell us hand to hand combat is conducting the same as other fights in fantasy books. Uh, gunfire, <laughs> your combat sequence of blast and less fresh as it follows. I suppose if yes. you want to. No, no, I'm using my 27 kinds of human and alien martial arts on him. Oh. <laughs> yes, I would. Right. So, second roll. Okay. Uh, eight. 19. Going to make short work of this prick. There you uh, like, uh, uh, let's have a, a roll from chat. Exclamation D12, please, chat. I don't like these space hook dice. Um, 11. Boom. Oh, well done, Father's Goose. Excellent roll there. Uh, 21. He's dead. That is one dead robot. So we're up to two, six, four. It's going to turn out that these are like convicts or something. <laughs> the robot terminates. If you don't already possess one, you may add the machine's assault blaster to your weaponry. Oh, can I not have two? Go on, then. <laughs> Um, you climb into the room the only sound now being the crackle of small circuits popping in the robot's chest and the odd stifled cough from the first cell which cell will you look at first the one with the sounds emanating from it or the silent one the silent one I need to tighten up the lumbar thing on my chair it keeps sliding down uh, the second cell appears to be empty, but when you enter, a screaming little ball of fur and legs drops from above the door onto your shoulder. It is All an right. imp. Hey. You knock it off with a sharp clout, but not before it has damaged your armour with its fangs. Lose an armour point. Ah, Quite cute. Uh, it scuttles back <laughs> up the wall and glares down at you with his red eyes. If you haven't already, you can look at the other cell. Otherwise, you can leave the room by the maintenance hutch. Get him. I'll, I'll have a look at the others. <laughs> Great. Uh, look at the other cell. 63. Yeah, have a look in the other cell, I suppose. There's no, like, hey, little limp dude, I saved you. Do you want to come and join me on my quest? Okay, the We're cell is occupied. Capture <laughs> some guys. <laughs> <laughs> by a battered old man. With scars covering his arms and bandages and stitches and stitches the rest. He starts apprehensively when you open the cell door, but upon the seeing the smoking remains of the robot through the narrow entrance, he brightens remarkably, telling you of his kidnap and torture by Cyrus and giving you words of encouragement. He doesn't yield much useful information though, for he knows a little about the pilot of the Van der Recken. He's a canny machine, that pilot. The old fellow cackles, worries about the strangest things. <laughs> Mind, if he asks you anything about thinking or feeling, 
Say you don't know. That's the safest course. If you haven't already, you can look in the other cell. Otherwise, leave the room. Right, yeah, I'll leave the room then. That was rather uneventful. So we've, we've learned that the pilot is a canny fellow. If he asks you anything about thinking or feeling, just say you don't know. I have Which I feel noted. Might be something of importance. When you go back into the tunnel. Time will tell. Right, back into the tunnel then, yeah. So, a few metres down the tunnel, you find another small hatch. Listening, you can hear nothing. The hatch just feels rather warm. Mm. You may continue along the access hatch, or you can open the hatch. I know, I'm about to, I'm about to jump headfirst into a furnace. <laughs> 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 Always open the door, my friend. Always open the door. Or it could be like a sauna. Yeah, it could be lovely, yeah. Woo! Through the hatch is a small room with several large steel conduits rising out of the floor and disappearing into the ceiling. It is from these conduits that the heat you could feel through the hatch emanates. Crossing the room, you come to a sliding door, which you open a fraction and peer through the gap in true assassin fashion. Before you is a large and, for aliens, fashionably furnished room. Odd couches and chairs, tables at just the wrong height and light set to just the, this side of two blue. Seated, reading for an electronic resource sheet are two rodent-like Fosnicks. Their white lab coats and tiny pincenez, or their equally tiny eyes, portrays them as being technical types. Right. Well, you enter the room and either threaten, attack, or these hench beings of Cyrus... We'll leave them alone and return to the access panel. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, bless you. First, first things first, I felt like that comment by the author of this book, nicely furnished for aliens, was a little bit xenophobic. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Second thing second, that. I'm, uh, I'm going to attack them. Attack them? Threaten them? Yeah. Or leave them alone? Yeah. You're just going to attack them? The book's not called Space Conversationalist, is it? called Space Assassin. Ah, you fling the door open and begin firing into the two Forsnicks. They are unarmed and unprepared, so you, being a trained assassin, gun them down easily. Looking about the room, you discover a security door hidden behind a decorative screen. Will you go through it or search their bodies? Search the bodies, please. Yeah, you know the rules. Ah, yeah, I'm all over it. You search the bodies, but you find nothing of any possible use or interest other than oh, that what? each of the Fosnicks carries a small, narrow cylinder on a long chain around its neck. Well, we'll have them each then. Each of these cylinders has SEC censored on it in tiny letters. You take one. If you've already examined the security door, or if you want to look at it now, so if you already examined the security door, turn to this, or if you want to look at it now, turn to 32. Uh, look at it now, please. 30. Feeling feeling good about this one. I'm just like full on action. I mean, my kill count's three so far. Yeah. <laughs> Security door is featureless and impassable. The only hint of it means of opening is a small hole on its side. Can I put one of these cylinders in it? Let's turn to one five five. Oh, okay. Give us any options. Aha! Aha! <laughs> Aha! You cry. The cylinder from the Fosnick is a key to the door. You push the cylinder into the hole next to the door, then watch as the door slides into the roof and whoosh. Right. The door opens onto a long, well-lit corridor. Right. After proceeding down this for 100 metres or so, you come across a sliding door to the left while the corridor continues into the distance. You open the door or continue down the corridor. Always open the door. Through the door is a small kitchen and dining area. Once again, everything is decorated in an alien style designed to make human behaviour difficult. The food that is available on the Milomatic is without exception unpalatable and raw. Oh. You do, however, find a couple of high energy bars which you may take with you. They count as a single item for your purpose. When you decide to eat these, five points will be restored to your stamina. 
It's How good. many? Two? Two. Alright. You then return to the corridor and proceed along it. Alright, well that was All right. uneventful. Yeah, but I've got the blood loss now, you know what I'm saying? The corridor ends in a circular room occupied by a squat, armless, tripedal robot. This robot, which has a pair of electric lashes projecting from its chest, squawks as you approach. Halt! Inspection point! <laughs> Will you attempt to bluff your way past the machine, or simply attack it? I'm going to attack it. In the fight, the robot will fire twice per combat round. Each hit doing two points of damage to your stamina. Now, oh, this doesn't say about shooting anyways. Let's just shoot it. Right, okay. Right, so he's got... Again, he's the same as the other one. He's 7-6. Okay. But he's got uh, two guns. That's two points of damage. He hits. That sucks. Uh, so, right... Let's roll off, see who wins. Oh, no, so you do your skill roll, don't you? And then I do my skill roll. Yeah, skill test. Skill test, and then you do your, your D6 if you hit. Right, skill test. Uh, I've got to be less than my less than my skill, yeah? Your skill, yeah. So I've done that, yeah, succeeded. And one, uh, what's the amount of damage you do? Six. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> You just, just blew it off the face of the <laughs> earth. You, you really are a highly trained assassin. Two, four, seven. Kill count four, folks. Kill count four. The robot falls over sideways. Thick black smoke's pouring from its shell. The room has two exits. A security door in front, on the opposite side of the corridor entrance, and another to the side. Will you inspect the remains of the robot or go through either of the doors in front or the door to the side? Uh, I will inspect the robot's remains, please. The robot is a useless hulk. But directly underneath where it was standing, you see a floor safe. Oh. It's button-covered dial previously hidden by the robot's feet. Right. Looking closer, you see that there are three different coloured buttons to press to open it. Blue, green and red. Intrigued, you decide to open it. But which colour button will you press first? Blue, green, or red? Yeah, there's not. We've not had any clue, nothing, have we, of no. any type to indicate? What do you think, chat? Blue, green, or red? I'm not particularly precious about any of the colour choices. Sham69 says green. Well, let's do it then. Green button, please. Let's do it. Green button, 385. 385 says turn to 337. That's a complete <laughs> waste of time. What? <laughs> We've had that a few times before. Mate. Oh, no. <laughs> As you depress the button, your world falls apart in soundless explosion. You never see what the safe has hidden. You have failed. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? As you depress the button, your world falls apart in a soundless explosion. You never see what the safe has hidden. You have failed. <laughs> you fucking kidding me? <laughs> right. Uh, well, we're we're in that place again, folks. It's time for a taxi backsy vote. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> time for the taxi backsy vote. Uh, Andy, your vote. Taxi backsy is by far. Yeah, we've only been doing it for like half an hour. <laughs> yeah, I'll vote for taxi backsy. Anyone in chat hanging around? Um, give us your vote. Taxi backsy, yay or nay? Rob says taxi backsy. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, back. go back and what, what, try what? the blue button. <laughs> Sham69, have you done this book before? Did you know that that's what... Um... <laughs> did, did you just troll us? 
<laughs> no, ha <laughs> he says. <laughs> um. <laughs> That's funny. You want to press the blue button? Was that... Uh, that wasn't even as long as the uh, House of Horror, was it? Or whatever it was called. Uh, you, want the, you want the blue button? Let's go for blue this time, yeah. Okay, as you press the button, your world falls apart in a soundless explosion. You never see what's the safe as hidden. You've failed. Are you joking? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think you misheard me. I said red button. Red, oh, red, red button. button. Sorry, yeah, my you bad. Were... Listen, Andy, come on. Sorry. Oh, I can't believe this. I mean, that's just so arbitrary, isn't it? I bet one of those science dudes that I've battered was, would say to you, you need to press the red button. That was my, whatever they were called, impression. Oh, for fuck's sake. The button depresses, making the safe style pulsate with a fluorescent white light. What button will you press next? <laughs> Blue Wait, or green? So are the page numbers the same? Uh, looks like the one for the blue is... Let's go green. All right, second green. Button, the second button depresses safely. When you press the third, the dial pops free of the floor, revealing the contents of the safe. Well, not really a safe, but a booby trap. There, sunk in the floor, is a gravity bomb which would have been set off had you pressed the wrong sequence of buttons. It's now safe to handle. Really? So, so you may add it to your weapons list. So you've got a gravity hey, bomb. Gravity bomb. We'll just not talk about the other bit. All right. We don't talk about Bruno. <laughs> we don't talk about the green button. <laughs> <laughs> which exit do you want? The one in front of you or the door to the side? Uh, let's go off to the side, please. You open the door and the world disappears. <laughs> uh, the door slides to the side to expose a large laboratory. Laboratory. Right. You don't have time to take in the details, however, as the tiny silver sphere descends from a niche in the roof and hits you with a laser blast. Oh. Lose one armor point. Oh. You will have to fight it. It's a laser globe. Right. It's got the skill of nine. Oof, right. But a stamina of one. Stamina of one? Yeah. Edit it out for YouTube. Nah, we leave that stuff in cheap. <laughs> uh, right, so I've got to roll under my skill level, yeah? Yeah. Here we go. And it is a four, which is firmly under my skill level. I mean, well... Uh you well, I can't not, can I, yeah? Overkill it. It would have been four points of damage. Blasted it into the ends of the air. Yeah, take that, you laser sphere. After just one hit, the globe goes out of control and spins wildly around the room before disintegrating against one of the walls. Looking around, it becomes apparent that this laboratory is used primarily for biological research. Oof. There are the usual instruments of vivisection, electronic monitoring devices, and, of course, water tanks and cages for respectively amphibious and terrestrial victims. Obviously. You find a number of items that may be of some use. Nice. Bring on the loot. A very light can of aerosol labelled nerve gas. Okay. A packet of three tablets unlabeled. Ooh. And a rather huge dead... But fresh crab. It's not <laughs> random in the slightest. <laughs> okay, so bearing in mind that you do not wish to be overladen, you may take any two of these items. Oh. If you want to try one of the tablets, you can. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> right. I'm going to keep my finger in this page just in case. <laughs> I'm hoping it's like that uh, milky liquid that you uh, <laughs> that was really useful. Oh, the, the elf, the like little impjes or whatever it was. Uh, <laughs> yeah. the, the tablet produces a momentary lightheadedness followed by a sensation of returning energy. 
Restore five points to your stamina. Hmm. You now have two tablets left, which you may take at any time to restore five points of your stamina. No, I'm going to... Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to take them because I've already got my pet pills and my energy bars. I'm going to take the giant crab instead, please. <laughs> and the aerosol can. Fine, cool. Um... How bizarre. Uh, you, you, if you don't try a tablet, you can go back the way you came. Right. If you try a tablet, you have to go on. All right. Oh, right. So that the other door in the, in the circular room, then that's it. I don't have an option now. Oh, no, no. I'm, I'm lying. Anyway, let's go on. Right. Okay. Yeah, let's do this. Uh, so... Oh, I'm going to sneeze door. now. Hang on. <laughs> What's going on? Door opens onto a long, light corridor. Following it, you eventually see another security door on your left. Can I? Sorry, can I just check then? Is this? Have I gone back and this is the other door in the previous room? No, no you've continued gone on through. through that through that yeah. laboratory. Okay. Yeah. The, the door opens onto a long light corridor. Following it, you eventually see another security door on your left. Do you want to open this or continue down the corridor? Open the door. Open the door. Oh, we've got two VIPs with us. That can only mean Ingledoo and Jordo are lurking around. Ingledoo. Ingledoo. The door opens to reveal a comfortable looking room. Which walls are completely lined with ancient bound books, microfilms, electronic resource sheets, and journals. On a table in the centre of the room, you find three microfilm volumes that have been left out, presumably for someone to read. One is on the nervous system of mollusks. Second right. is about neurotoxins. And the third is an article on robotics. They are all possibly relevant, but you only have time to peruse one of them. Which will it be? So have you got the nervous system of mollusks? The second one is about neurotoxins, and the third is about robots. The mollusk one seems oddly specific to me. It does seem quite specific, doesn't it? In a in a kind of like that's relevant sort of way, and yeah. there's water tanks around, isn't there? Yeah. A and there was a giant crab, which is a crustacean. So there's like a whole aquatic animal thing going on here. So let's read the one about the mo mollusk's nervous system. No problem. Write that down on your adventure sheet, and then you return to the corridor and proceed. How do you spell along mollusk? It. M O L L U S C S. That's mollusk. Huh. Three, nine, eight. So you've gone out, you come back out, you continue down the corridor. Right, cool, thank you. Oh, uh, this one's right at the back. The corridor continues for a very long while and still stretches into the distance when you come across another security door on the side. Right. This one is stenciled. Cephalo cephalo squirrels handle with care. I don't know what so cephalo is. C e p h a l o squirrels handle with care. Do you want to enter the room or continue down the corridor? I am not familiar with the terminology, and therefore I feel like I need to educate myself and find out what a cephalo squirrel cephalo is. Cephalo squirrels. Okay, ready your blaster. I will do. Of course, the, uh, and as well, the uh, Mod Extra Thrilling Adventure rule is always open the door. Opening the door, you step into a room largely taken up by a glass cage of tri tiny screaming creatures. Oh. They all have six legs and bulging right. eyes, and most have thick black fur. The odd ones out having been shaved for no apparent reason. They're all leaping <laughs> about their cage in great agitation, swinging from overhead bars and rattling at the door. The only other thing in the room is a large open crate, some metres from the cage. Will you try and have a closer look at one of the creatures, 
or do you want to look in the crate instead? And let me just show Let's... you the picture. Yeah, they do look a bit aggy, don't they? It, that looks a bit... Put it up again. You know, that's giving me... Sorry, oh, shit, down factory. vibes. Oh, does no. it? <laughs> yeah. Which are not good vibes. Watership down is not, not positive experience. So uh, I'm going to investigate the crate first. Okay, three, seven, two. Again, right near the back. <clears throat> the crate is almost <laughs> full. Brian, uh... The crate is almost full of an orangey purple fruit. As you stir it around a bit with one hand, you notice that all the squirrel things have become silent uh, and are staring hungrily at you. No, they want their dinner. Okay. Well, that would Will indicate you... then that they're not, you know, carnivorous. <laughs> Will you taste a bit of the fruit, pocket a few pieces, or leave everything in the room alone and proceed down the corridor? Uh, let's taste it. <laughs> I am the worst at this. <laughs> like, what? Put it in my mouth. Rub it on my face. <laughs> uh, let me give you a hint. Yeah. Don't taste it. Let's uh, pocket a few pieces. Good idea. <laughs> uh, uh, you slip a few pieces of the fruit into your pack. Then seeing nothing else of interest, you leave the room and continue along the corridor. Down to one one eight. Just give me two seconds. I have to blow my nose after that sneeze. Right. I'm just gonna get a tissue. 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 One eight. This one is very vicious and very unforgiving. I have returned. I say this one clear... is really, really unforgiving. Oh, I it? heard you. Yeah, I still have my headphones right, on. Now. Yeah, it is. Like, just uh, press a button. <laughs> <You're dead. laughs> yeah. Um, the corridor, after another 100 metres, comes to a dead end. On the wall responsible for sealing the passenger way off are two large square buttons side by side. Oh, I don't like buttons. You want to press the left one, the right one, or both together. Both together. Both together. <clears throat> it's savage in space. It is. And he's shaking his head. That's not a good sign. Without warning, so it's because it goes to one five six, which says turn to one six six. Just know that that's shit. That's not without a good sign. warning. The floor slides away and sends you plummeting down a narrow chute. The floor, now above, moves back into place, plunging you into darkness. The slide continues for a few minutes until the darkness gives way and you find yourself apparently ejected over an alien planet. Strange, though, it looks very close and rather donut-shaped, not a planetary formation you had been aware it could exist. You plummet down towards it, absorbing breathtaking views from the wide alien vistas, panoramas and rolling purple hills. Just before you hit the ground at something like 260 kilometers an hour, you mysteriously decelerate and land lightly. You no longer seem to be in the starship, but on another planet. From now on, compass points will be used for directional reference. <laughs> what? Right, so my little map of start is no good anymore. <laughs> no, because you're now on a, on a donut planet. Uh, I'll give it up on the map. I never do well with the maps anyway. You're on a Planet grass covered plane which rolls on into the north. To the west and south you can see a blue green forest <laughs> while the east some low rocky hills rise out of the grass. Would you like to go north across the rolling plains mm -hmm. and go west towards the blue green forest east towards rocky hills or south again towards the blue green forest. Uh, let's go uh, north uh, west to the east. Okay, yeah. Um, 
What? No, it's west. West is where life is peaceful there. Go west. Life is peaceful there. Go left. Yeah, go west. We're going west. Yeah, go west. Yeah. Uh, you are in a densely packed forest of very tall thorn covered trees. Right. The forest stretches as far as you can see in all directions. Would you like to go north, west, south, or east? North. I ain't got no idea what's going on. You're on the grass-covered <laughs> plain, which extends to the north, east, and west. To the south is a forest. As you trek across the plains, you see a shadow gliding over the grass towards you. Looking oh. up, you see a massive winged scorpion diving at you with its sting lowered. Oh. There is nowhere to run or hide. You will have to fight in hand to hand. Ah, right. Okay, here we go then. Here we go. Uh, the winged scorpion has a skill of eight, a stamina of six. A skill of eight. Right then, here we go. So what do I do? Roll two and add my uh, skill in it. Yeah. Right. So I have got eight plus five. So eight plus six is 14. Uh, 11, 15, 16. That's the first one. You used your 27 different types of martial arts, martial human arts. and alien. Ooh. Uh, seven, 18. 18 as well. Oh, lucky. Lucky, lucky. 16. Uh, 21. <laughs> okay. Right. One more then. Go on, chat, exclamation D12 for me, please. 15. Let's finish this flying scorpion off. Oh, Father's Goose with the A-grade platinum rolls today. That's 21 again, my friend. Done. The winged scorpion is deed. That is one dead winged scorpion. I now add my fifth kill to my kill count. Do you want to go north, west, south, or east? Uh, West. You're on a grass covered plain which extends to the west, south, and east. In the north, you can see some low hills. Oh. A short distance away, in the center of the plain, you can see what might be a wooden structure rising out of the grass. Would you like to investigate it, or you can turn northwest or south or east? Let's go check out the wooden structure. Round five. The structure, as you approach it, turns out to be a short pier extending out into a rapidly flowing river. Oh. Moored to the pier are several sturdy-looking canoes. Oh. You may take a canoe and paddle down the river westwards. You can ignore them and walk north, west, south, or east. <sighs> Let's take a canoe. <laughs> This space, this space odyssey is turning a very odd turn. <laughs> yeah, they've just basically transformed it into a standard... Like a <laughs> Flying scorpions, grassy plains, dense forest. Still some poor fisherman's canoe. Yes, absolutely. 100%. So the boat handles well. It's obviously very tough. You follow the river westwards, hardly having to paddle except to steer in strong currents. Eventually, the river describes... A wide arc to the south, and the sounds of approaching rapids become apparent. The current quickens. You can you can beach the craft. Uh, so if you decide to beach the craft, you can land on either the west bank or the east bank. Alternatively, you can shoot the rapids. Let's land it. Uh, oh, Rob wants me to ride the rapids. All right, yeah, let's ride the rapids. <clears throat> Let's do it. Right, okay. 
<laughs> He's just typed sorry. <laughs> Rocks appear out of the water and cliffs rise on both sides as you hurtle south ahead, the roar of the white water increasing. Uh, the boat is swept down through a series of water slides, small waterfalls, and jumbled rocks. Roll two dice. If the roll okay. exceeds, if it is higher than your skill, you have lost control of the boat and fall out of it. Hi, so under, 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 yeah, under, your, under your skill. I'm fine under my skill. I've got a skill eleven, so it's pretty, pretty strong. Eventually, the rapids ends, and you are carried down the center of a giant chasm. You are in the middle of a vast, still lake flanked by towering cliffs. Looking down into the water, you notice a metallic glint from a large submerged shape. You dive down to investigate and are confronted by a small submarine obviously in working order, but currently unoccupied. A tug on your heel dist dist distracts you from your find, especially Hi, when Jordan. you turn to see that the house sized, especially when you turn to see that a house sized octopoid bivalve has a firm grip on your leg with one oh. of its tentacles. A house sized one? A house sized octopoid bivalve. Uh, it drags you towards its shell. Right. If you've read the book on Mollusk's nervous system, turns to 47. <laughs> Otherwise, turn to 85. I most certainly have read yeah, the book. Yeah, did. <laughs> <laughs> Go. I love this shit. It's so random. <laughs> <laughs> the knowledge you have gained from reading the book will allow you to inflict an extra point of damage on the bivalve every time you hit it. Yeah, it will. House sized by whatever a bivalve is. Yeah. The picture, it looks like an octopus type thing. Oh. Yeah, okay. Right, you engage in hand to hand combat with the bivalve whilst underwater. Oof. Do inflict an extra for damage. His skill is nine, and his stamina is eight. Eight. Okay. Well, here we go then. <clears throat> here we go. Right. Oh, that's not a strong roll. Sixteen. Oh. It was enough though. Oh, uh, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. 19. 15. Ooh, uh, 16 just. Okay, let's uh, get chatting on the action. Exclamation D12, please, chat. Uh, 20. 20? Yeah. I need a good one, chat, now then. I've got 11, so I need a, a 9 or a 10. Please. Roll that dice. Roll that dice. Oh, it's a seven, putting me at 80. Hold on. Before you do that, you've been doing extra damage, oh, haven't you? I've been doing extra damage. Yes, I so have. Eight, seven, six, five. He did three hits, which would be... Nine in total. Nine in uh, total. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't count. He's dead already. No, not nine. It's two damage, isn't it, per hit? Yeah, so you've been doing three. Yes, three, six, nine. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Sound. My master right, okay. sound. Sixth kill on the kill count. Chip, chip. One, eight, two. Need to get back up to the ship. Yeah, I want. I want to steal this submarine. <laughs> See what I can do with the submarine. Uh, you drop. You dive down to the submarine and climb through the airlock. Safe. There is only one control for the submarine, an on-off switch set into the arm of a chair in the conning tower. Conning tower? No. Turn it on. The submarine moves, gliding it into a tunnel in the lake bed. The journey takes a while and allows you some much-needed rest, restoring four points of your stamina. Eventually, you surface into a large room, half of which is a pool of water for the submarine. 
while the other half looks strangely like the interior of the Van der Vecken. Climbing from the cunning tower into the dry half of the room, you see that there is only one exit and you go through it. So you've gone out of the fighting fantasy adventure bit back into the spaceship. <laughs> I fought a flying scorpion, I fought a giant octopus, now I'm back in the spaceship. This is a very odd book. <laughs> yeah. Behind the door is a path. What? Floating in midair at a pre precipitous, a precipitous height over a wide and distant countryside. Not quite. Right. It must be miles below you, yet it is still within the Van der Vecken. Right. The path, looking tenuous and unreassuring, flies arrow straight into the distance. You head across it, eventually arriving at a T-junction. The path splits and flies off in two new directions, neither offering a visible end to the possibility of a fatal drop. Will you follow the path to the left or the right? Uh, left. Left. Before fire. Why not? Why not, indeed. The path flies straight for a long while before ending at another T-junction. Looking down, you can still see the alien countryside whilst to the left and right, the paths hang in the air. Precipitous and unending. Which way will you turn? Left or right? Left again. <clears throat> you make good time. The path curves for a bit and then ends in a massive grey wall which seems to extend down towards the alien countryside. Going through the door at the end of the path, you find yourself in what is obviously a security nexus. Right. Two dome-headed guards dressed in black with matching leather strap boots and holsters are seated at a wide console engrossed in a direct telecast from Epsilon Indy of a zero-G fangball. <laughs> of a zero-G fangball which is showing on all 10 security monitors in the room. Right. The guards leap to their collective feet when they see you, shine the tops of their scalps, and take up an assertive posture. Who are you? They ask so suspiciously. Will you fight them? Attempt to bluff them into thinking you're part of the ship's crew, or look in your pack for some other means of overcoming the obstacle? Yeah, I've got the nerve gas, haven't I? Dude. Now, how, how hard can these guys be? You know what I mean? I'm going to fight them. A fight them? Yep. Oh, nice. I'm taking the role of space assassin very seriously. <laughs> as you are standing in the cover of a doorway, you may throw a grenade in at them. However, as they have a console for cover... Deduct one point of damage resulting from the blast. If the grenade fails, grenade. they will shoot at you simultaneously, but you may fire only at one of them at a time. Right. So you have to shoot at the. Th they're both six four, so it doesn't matter. So at least I'll be able to shoot, have a go at shooting, yeah? Okay. So, uh, skill check. Bizarrely enough, it doesn't tell me what guns they've got. Oh. So I'm going to assume that they've got the, the kind of shit one. Yeah. Like, they're they're, they're in like the B grade lash. dudes, aren't they? Yeah, Just the like electric <sighs> lash. Bob the Hydra agent. Uh, right then, I'll take my first roll, which is not under my skill level. <laughs> <laughs> I've just rolled double six. For God's sakes. Uh, right, so Electric Lash basically does two points of damage. But you get your arm save anyway, don't you? Yeah. Well, the armor's whittling down bit by bit. So, first security guard. He's got a skill of six. I've rolled a 11. So he, he, he shoots wildly. He's a stormtrooper. Second security guard has got a skill of six. It's not looking good. And he scores a fourth seven. But he wildly also shoots over your head. All right, I'll take my next shot then. Uh, that is under my skill count. And Either I will four or hit... more. Oh, yeah, one. one. 
Okay, look, then my boys shoot back at you. Is it um, equal or under? Oh, uh, I wrote less than when I made a note before. Uh, greater than or equal to your skill, you have missed. Yeah. So he misses because he rolled a six. Very good. That's what we like to hear. He scored a seven, so he also misses. Right, okay. Shot number three for me. Uh, and that is a successful shot. Right, three or more to get rid of the this dude. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> First security guard is down. Second security guard is harrowed by the death of his buddy that he was watching sports with a minute ago. Uh, and <laughs> shoots the ceiling. Back to you. Very good. Okay. Doosh. Uh, that's just, just under. Ten I've just rolled, and I've got 11. Right. And I deliver a grand Dread. total of five points of damage. Uh, in, in his sorrow, you level your gun at him and just destroy his whole guts. Uh, so there we go. Two, oh, There's three. There's a shadowy thing, figure just passing through there. Look, see you're on camera, my love. Oh. Robot security guard. Come on, get out of it. The guards are vanquished, but a red light is flashing on the video controls. Perhaps somebody or something has been alerted. You'd better hurry. The room has two other exits. One is security door, and the other is a simple manual sliding door. If you don't already have one, you may take an assault blaster. Oh, they had assault blasters, apparently. Uh, oh. Not that they hit. With they didn't either. hit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which which door do you want to go through? The security door or the sliding door? Um, the security door, please. Okie doke. It's all much of a muchness in it when it comes to these doors. Doesn't even tell you which way they go. The exit leads you down a corridor into a wide circular room whose floor space is almost completely taken up by a deep, still pool. The only area not covered with water are the paths leading around the edge of the room. The very, right. very, very narrow bridge without handrails, which is passed over the middle of the pool. Both of these lead from where you stand to another opening on the other side of the room. Do you want to cross the bridge or take the narrow path around the edge? Hmm. I will take the narrow path around the edge, please. Duck. I feel like being on the middle of a bridge. Yeah. Feels Shamu. less secure to me. Yeah. When you're about halfway around the pool, a series of ripples spreads across the face of the water. You hurry along, but notice to your horror that tentacles are rising out of the pool's edge and crawling like slimy green serpents towards you. Yeah, well, Before you I'm can run, you are surrounded. Was... Out of the water rise bloated green bodies, ghastly yellow eyes glinting and hungry beaks clicking. Confronting you are two creatures which resemble both man and octopus. Well, Will you fight them or search through your pack for some other means of defence? Um, yeah, let's search through my pack. Let's see if I can use the nerve gas on this on your mum. Okay, so if you have any of the following items below, choose which one you will use and turn to the appropriate page. So you've got aerosol can of nerve gas, pan dimensional homing device. <laughs> what? Bottle of ink or anti mollusk formula four? Uh, I have the aerosol of nerve gas. Doke. The... You spray the mutants, but with little effect. Oh. In fact, the only thing you achieve is to empty the aerosol can, cross it off your equipment list. You'll have to fight the monsters. All right, okay. Boo. Boo. If you have a grenade, you can throw one into the pool. All right. Yeah. No, you don't, dear. Do no. Three, one, two. How big is this, this thing, then? Okay. You fight them hand to hand. If you have read the book on Mollusk Nervous System, you inflict one extra point of damage every time you hit the creature. Yeah, baby. You have one mutant who is 8-8, eight, eight, and the second mutant is 8-6. Eight, 
Bloody hell. Uh, right, I'm going to go for the big one first, please. Go. Nope. And we have... I forgot what I'm doing. What we're doing. Two uh, dice and add my skill, isn't it? Yeah. 20. 13. Boom. So it's three off, isn't it? Because it's uh, a mollusk. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. That's a good one to choose, eh? Yeah. Nine, Ooh, uh, 20 again. 11. It's down to two. Let's have one from chat. If anyone's still around, exclamation D12, please. 12. It's got a bit quiet. I don't know if there's anyone still around. Oh, yeah, Rob's still here. Uh, six plus 11, 17. He is dead. On to the 8-6. Octopus Man. And that is a 8. So that's 16. Ooh, just uh, 15 for me there. Pick two stamina. Do I, do I get to use my armour first? Armour's for shooting. For shooting. Ooh, right. Two stamina off. Okie dokie. Well, that was crap. Three. Uh, seven. Eleven. Eighteen. That puts him down to three. <laughs> Engrossed in the action. Yeah, you just can't take your eyes away. You just the, the imagination of me battling with uh -huh. beaky mollusks. Uh, but let's uh, let's have another roll from chat, please. Exclamation D12. Sixteen to beat. So what's that? Five what? or more? One good hit. Yeah, Someone. one good hit, and you're. Um, And you'll kill it. It's a time delay, you know. Time delay. Mm. Here we go. Four, five, six, seven. It's 18 for me. Thank you, Rob. He's down. You've killed those two poor innocent people that have been experimented on and turned into octopus. Well, it's their own fault for getting themselves experimented on, if you ask me. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> the bodies of the creatures float gently into the surface of the pool. Run to the exit. Right. Cool. Kill count nine. Through the opening in a chamber occupied by a brutish-looking extraterrestrial draped in a large sheet of armour plate and toting a whopping great disintegrator aimed at you. Uh-oh. Wow. Um, in the wall behind this... Unfriendly being are three large circular doors. Right. Stop, it says, peering at you with a pair of clothes set beady eyes. To pass, you must answer my questions if you think you're intelligent enough. Will you attempt to answer the creature's as yet unasked questions? Look in your pack for some other means of passing it. Or forget the niceties and just blast it. <laughs> no, I tell you what, let's have a go at answering these questions. This might be r Dude, fun in like a random kind of way. Face ass, badass samurai. Oh, yeah. You've got all a bit pixelated, dude. Uh, I think it's the focus on this thing. I've not um, thought about it on the autofocus thing. Yeah. Sort it out. Um, so you're going to answer his questions? Yeah, let's give that a go. All right. 15, right back to the start of the book. Um, I have to take a bathroom break in a minute. What's the question? You ask. This answers the alien. What is the next letter in the following sequence? O T T F F S S E. What? O T T F F. S S E. When you have decided what the next letter in the sequence should be, determine the number of the letter of that letter. What? A equals one, B equals two, C equals three, D equals four. Multiply that number by ten. That is the number you should turn to. If the page you turn to doesn't make sense in contents, you obviously made a mistake and you're destroyed <laughs> by the creature's disintegrator. What? O T T F F S S E. Yeah, you're right, Sean. Sixty nine. That's clear as mud. Right. Well, so we've got a single vowel at the beginning. 
So O to T, L M N no, P Q R S T, so five. Then T to F, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T. It's 14. I'm following a very scientific method here. It's not our fault you got it wrong. No, I don't think it's, it this will clearly be nobody's fault if you get uh, this wrong. F, G, H, I, J, K, I've just Googled it. N, O, P, Q, R, S. Right. So I do know the answer, and I can't aid you. Okay, I, like my, my whole thing about change. figuring out the gap, the distance between the letters. Am I? Uh, no, if reason? if I were to say that the the so they're the first letter of something. They're the first letter of something. Yeah, but what? Oh. <laughs> Of of a something that is very much in sequence. Go and have a pee. Think about it. Right. Okay. Five minutes. I'm going to go and get myself a drink. All right. Let me just put the uh, gone for a pee screen up. Anyone in the chat? If you get it, you can put it up in the chat. Where is me gone for a pee screen? There it is. Right. Mics are still hot though. Okay. <laughs> The na the naked gun P scene. I don't remember the naked gun P scene. You couldn't hear me, could you? <laughs> right, let's uh, try and crack this thing then. So I've got. What I initially was doing was um, thinking, like, how many letters are there distance between O and T, T and F, F and S? Um, but I don't think... I don't know. But then Andy was saying the first letters or something? Go and have a think about it. Any clues? Any ideas? I've got. I'm clueless, mate. I'm just staring. Hello. I'm just staring at it like out there. Out there. Octopus. <laughs> what kind of things are in a sequence? What kind of things are in a sequence? Dance moves. <laughs> oh, it's not Strictly, is it? No. Um, so when you're, you're looking for a pattern, aren't you? Yeah. What things do you usually like have puzzle patterns? What kind of things have puzzle patterns? Yeah. The, these these cryptic questions are not guiding me. 
any <laughs> any closer to getting what on earth that's getting at. Um, so if you were like to go through the alphabet, it would be like A, B, C, D, F, G. Yeah. Went through something else that will maybe. Um, um, what what has a sequence? What what goes in sequence? Well, yeah, exactly. Tumbleweed Sham Sixty Nine. What goes in sequence? If it's not letters, it could be. Numbers? Yeah. So what we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The next one would be nine and N. N. Then N would be A B C D E F G H I J K L M N fourteen. 14 plus uh, times by 10, 140. 140. Fucking hell. Fuck off, Steve Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> I want to shoot things, not like puzzles. Uh, the answer, of course, the letter N. Correct, says the extraterrestrial. You may pass. You want to go through the right door, the centre door, or the left door? Right through the middle. Centre door. Set a door. Fourteen. <clears throat> After a short walk down a corridor, you find yourself in a room occupied solely by seventy or eighty floating black spheres. So black that they look like holes in the air. They drift about the room in a lazy circular motion, touching nothing. On the other side of the room, through the spheres, you can see a door. If you have the pan-dimensional homing device, you can use it if you want. Otherwise, you want to ignore the spheres and walk straight through the middle of the room to the other door. Try reaching the other side by dodging past the spheres. Go back to the room you've just come from and take the left door, or go back to the room you've come from and take the right door. Uh, let's walk through ignoring the spheres. Trying to dodge them, yeah? Oh, no, just walk straight through. Yeah, it just says walk through, ignoring them, didn't it? Yeah, just got go through it. Just walk it as if they're not there. Yeah, just walk through. Just let them kind of sprawl past me. Oh, TJ's just gone live. The spheres part before you as you stride boldly forward. Over the other side of the through the door, you find yourself in a... Oh, that's what? What? That's it? These dangerous spots, and, and you just, just walk, part. and they just get out of your way. Yeah, yeah. Well, part. they obviously know who I am. <laughs> you know who I am. I'm a space assassin. Uh, the spears part before you as you stride boldly forward. Over the other side of the th uh, and through the door, you find yourself in a high ceilinged hall. Down both sides of this hall, standing on a short stone pedestals, is a small but weird collection of simulated life forms. They stand facing one another across the room. Aluminium birds, tungsten steel turtles with six legs and creatures you don't even recognise. There are eight in all. You walk slowly down the middle of the room. As you draw level with the first pair, they come to life, swivelling slightly to face you. Creepy. The moon is red and the sky is pink, says the first. Right. Which is faster Light or time? asks the second. Will you answer light or time? What, the moon is red and the sky is pink? That's irrelevant then, isn't it? The first one's yeah. just chuddering shit. Uh, which is faster, light or time? Uh, speed of light's faster? Is it? I don't know. No, I don't know. Do you want to do light? I've not, yeah, I do like. I've not got to that section of my astrophysics doctorate yet. Uh, 
Rongo Buster, says the first. Tough Chuck, Thanks. says the second. Little panels flick and open in their bodies, revealing multiple blasters. You'll have to fight them. Okay, well, that's more my pace. That's... <laughs> yeah, okay, so you have got six. Simulcrum. To your dismay, all but two of the Simulcra spring blasters from their chest, legs, and under their wings, and are all unlikely places. You have to fight them all. They attack you simultaneously. So there's four of them? There's six of them. Didn't it just say all but two? Yeah. That's been eight. Huh. And they're all pretty badass. Oh, are they? Hang on, I need some more paper one sec. Right, come on then. Come on then. So, we're shooting. And you will have to shoot one, and then I'll get to shoot back with you at all of them. What's their... I need their defence numbers, dude. Okay, so we have got... The first one uh, is 8-3. Second one is eight three. The third one is seven three. Fourth one is six two. The fifth one is six two, and the last one is five two. All right, so I could I could fuck them up with one shot then, couldn't I? In theory. Yeah, you should be able to like do them all in one as long as you hit them. Yeah. All right. Right, go on Number then. one then. Level up against them then. Under your skill. Or is it under my skill? skill? Is, no, under my skill. Successfully skill. achieved. And the shot is five points of damage. Right, he is blown into next day. Right, then I get yeah. to fire back to you. So skill eight. He shoots you. That's two points. So you do your armor thing. Is yeah. Under your armor. Yeah, so what have I got to do? Roll under my armor with two dice. Yeah. Uh, oh, which I have not done. That's a tie. Is it equal to? Um, I don't know. (laughs) Bro. Armor, armor, armor. Gunfire. Equal or less than your current armor score, your opponent's shot will not penetrate, but you lose a point. Right, cool. So equal, that's fine, but I'm down one. Cool. Yeah. And then this guy is uh, seven. He misses. Then six. Misses. Six. Misses. Five. No chance. Misses. So they all miss. Go again. Right. Cool. Next shot then. Uh, ooh, 11. That's equal to my skill. So that's a miss. I've missed. Miss. Ooh. And my boys get to shoot back. He misses. He misses a lot. He misses just. He misses. And he misses. Right, cool. Next shot is under my skill. And it delivers five points of damage. Oh, there's two down. There's the two that can shoot gone. <laughs> and now I've got a roll under a seven. Oh, he does. Oh, so okay. two points unless you can save it. Uh, yeah, that's equal to my armor right now. Cool. So, so you save one, it and you lose one armor down. Then under six. No, this is going to get harder six. today. Yes, so two more points unless you can save it. Oh, okay. All right, I'm going to get under six now, which I do not. You take two points. Yeah, and then the last one's got to be under five, which he misses. So on to the third guy. Okay. Doosh. Yep, that's under my skill, and I've done three points of damage. Yeah, he's gone, and then I've got to get under six. No, under six. No, under five. No. Okay. Next shot. Pew. Oh, cock dice again. Look. Oh, that. It's not even up against anything. Yeah. Uh, right, that's under my skill. And that is delivering four points of damage. He's gone. So that's the... So two left now. Yeah, so under six. No, under five. No. Cool. Uh, just chat, want to go? Exclamation D12. I'm looking for a roll under 11, please. I've just looked directly into my lamp and give myself spotty eyes. Yeah. 
Nice. Yep, that's under my skill. And yep. then do you want to do the damage as well, Rob? Exclamation D6. Two or more to kill it. And it's a two. Nice. I've got a roll. Okay, yeah. Four or less. I get a five. So he misses. All right. Final shot. I'll take this one. Uh, that is indeed under my skill. Two or more. And I've done three points of damage. Okay. So in the unlikely event that you defeat them. In the unlikely take... event. <laughs> Three, two, nine. What do we got? What's going on? You approach the last pair. They are immobile and flank two identical doors. One of the devices rolls its eyes at you and says, the right door is the one you want. Don't listen to him, advises the other. He lies. Oh, this Only is that sometimes thing. resorts the first. Which door will you go through? The right or the left? I've heard this riddle before. Um, don't listen to him. He lies. But he comes back with only sometimes. But only sometimes. I've heard this riddle before. Uh, it's boring. It's Jack Daniels, honey. You can probably tell because it's a bit more. Um, I don't know what word? Viscous. Um. Uh, yeah, I'm going to believe him. I'm going to go for the right door. Did he say? Uh, yeah. I'm free one. Actually, this has been hanging around since Christmas, Rob. A mate of mine got a gift pack um, with all different flavours and stuff in it, which is nice. I mean, you probably probably see that the drinks cabinet pride of place. <laughs> The door opens into a long room occupied by two robot sentinels flanking the exit at the far end. As you enter, they open fire with a blaze of darting lasers. Oh, you shit, okay. back into the cover of the doorway and contemplate how to get past them. The two sentinels are heavily armoured, saucer-shaped devices which float about a third of a metre above the floor, which will almost certainly put up a very stiff resistance. Glancing back into the room for a moment, you notice that the ceiling is quite low and the construction uh, and constructed in an open crisscross gantry design which runs the length of the room. Right. So you, you take a second to stop and admire the architecture. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, if you've read the book on robotics, <laughs> you haven't. No, I haven't. 36. Oh, no. Was that? Uh, then it'd probably only give you an extra point, would it? Will you engage the sentinels in a fight or jump for the hanging girders of the ceiling and use them as cover and attempt to approach the exit at the other end of the room? They're pretty big and mean, are they? I mean, like, you've been pretty much destroying everything in the past, but they, are, they, they, they look like spacey zappers. Um, let's try and fight them. Fuck it. I'm on a kill uh, count. My kill count's 15 right now, I'm just saying. So, you know. Yeah. As you are quite a distance from the robots, you may throw a grenade if you have one. No, I've got a gravity bomb. You do. Does that count? Um, yeah, why not? Do, well, does that not have its own instruction when you can use gravity bombs? I think you could use it at any time. But right. they are but. Um, Sentinels are 8 9. Eight, nine. So they are pretty tough, but it's a shootout. So I tend to dish out a lot of damage in the shootouts, don't you I? Do, yeah. Ah, oh, let's do it. Come on. Cool. Let's right. Do it. Oh, I don't know yet. You will. Right. First shot. Uh, five, six, seven, eight. That is under my skill. And I'm delivering four points of damage. So, first one shoots. He hits you. Yeah. Oh, does he? The armor save. I'll do an armor roll. Yeah, I'm down to six, though, so it's quite hard now to... But I do have Take an it. armor save. Go down to down five. To, down to five. Second one hits you as well. Oof. Uh-oh. Uh, the blue dice rolled nicely for me last time, so let's do it again. 
No, let down by the blue dice. Take damage. I'm taking my two damage. Right, my second shot is indeed under my skill and delivers three points of damage. Taking down a two. Yeah. All right, guys, shoot back. One misses. Six, seven, eight, nine. Both miss. Fuck it up. That's what we like to see. Take another shot. Uh, that is under my skill. And it delivers three points of damage. First one is sufficient down. to take the first one down, yeah. Second one shoots back. He hits. Oh, okay. Uh, hang on, let me just clear. Uh, which dice is it? I've just rolled that one. Um, that is not under my armor. Take two. Uh oh. Cool. Got you take your right. pills. Though. Yeah. Yeah, I've got my pills and my energy bars and stuff. It's all fine. Uh, that is not under my skill. I've missed. All right. One shoots back. These golden he ones. Hits, like, yeah. Double six. Oof. Armor check is failed. Things are getting a bit. Twitchy now. Can I stop and have a bit of dinner? <laughs> um, oh, I just rolled a d6 by accident. I meant to roll d12. Uh, here we go. It's under my skill. Big and oh, one. And then an eight. Not good. Not right. good. He hits you again. Make eyes. Yeah. Right. Nope. That's another two off. Oh, I'm down to five here. On the old stamina, I need a good hit. Yeah, you need a couple uh, of good fire. Yeah, let's go for the red dice this time. Uh, that's under my skill. And it gives a four-point hit. There we go, that's more like it. All right, second sentinel hits back. <sighs> Misses very badly. That's what we like to hear. That's what we like to hear. Uh, let's give that one a roll. Six, seven. Yes, that's under my skill. And that's going to be six points. Oh, of dreaded and deaded at this point. Would you like to uh, take some pills or some bars or some... Yes, please. Uh, five points of stamina they give me, don't they? So uh, yeah. I'll take two of my... Uh, I'll eat the two energy bars. Yeah. Which will take me up to 15. Effect all. Cool. Jobs are good. Yeah. Lethal assassin. I am, mate. My kill counts on 5, 10, 15, 16, 17 now. Three. I am assassinating motherfuckers all over the shop. Yeah, the sentinels cool. are smoking piles of debris, littering the floor with smashed and burning parts. You stride past them and through the exit. 6, 9. Oh, do I not get to search them for trinkets no. or anything? The opening leads into a narrow corridor, which, after twisting and winding for a while, ends in a door. Going through this, you find yourself in what is obviously the ship's bridge. Oh, is there a pilot there by any chance? There's a panoramic visuals, holographic plotters and maps, and scores of comlinks in front of you, standing before a control panel with which it is connected by an umbilical cord, is the ship's pilot. Stunningly wrought humanoid robot. In its chromium limbs send reflections skittering across the walls as it turns to face you. Ah, you've arrived, it says, almost smiling. Yes, I've been quite looking forward to chatting with such an interesting person. Will you talk to the pilot or assume it's trying to get your guard down and attack it? I will talk to the pilot this time. Yeah, because you've got his... Ah, uh... Mr. Bond, yeah, <laughs> Mr. Bond. Come in, come in. It urges amiably, waving you forward. Tell me, it continues, since you are a person who deals with life and death, consciousness and non-consciousness, do you think that it is possible that one of us is simply the creation of the other's mind? Do you think that you could be dreaming me or that I could be dreaming you? What a question. Will you yeah. hazard an answer? Or tell the pilot that you really don't know. So this is so it's the guy said to me before. Um, if it asks about thinking and feeling, say don't know. Yeah. So is this about thinking and feeling? Do you think that you could be dreaming me? I think so. 
Yeah, let's say don't know. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. That's on the best advice we've received so far. <laughs> I could always shoot him if it goes wrong. Oh, says the pilot, a little hurt at your reply. But, oh. it continues, if it were possible, and we assume just for the argument's sake that you are actually the conscious entity creating this world around you out of your own mind, do you think that I, a creation of yours, might be able to have conscious experiences without your conscious knowledge of such events? Could I be sort of a sub-self of you? Will you tell the robot you don't know, or ignore the rather bizarre questioning and change the subject to something more useful, such as the whereabouts of Cyrus? I'm going to say don't know again. This is, uh, what's his name? Sorry, Der- is it Derek Omeros, Simulation and Simulacra? One of the one of these dudes, Livingston or Jackson, have been. It's the book that the Matrix is based on. So, oh, says the disappointed pilot. Perhaps you're not really such an interesting person after all. Quite boring, actually. Mm. It sighs and turns away. I think you should leave now, it says. So you leave. Okay. <laughs> All right. See you later. Uh, I was just looked it up. It's Jean Baudrillard. I don't know who, why I was thinking of Derek Omeros. Just had a little nosy. That was definitely the right thing to do. Um, <laughs> okay. The bridge has three doors leading from it. One is marked with a star, another with a crescent, and the third has the legend computer stenciled on it. Which will you go through? The star door, the crescent door, or the computer door? Uh, Star door for me, obviously. Obviously. Okay. The door leads you to a long corridor which ends in a blank wall. When you touch the wall to see if there are any hidden doors, all the lights go out and are replaced by an otherworldly blue haze. A high-pitched whine starts up at the other end of the corridor and small electric flashes arc down towards your end. You realise too late that you're in a particle accelerator. Bright cloud of positrons accelerate to near light speed, fires down the corridor and crashes into you removing you from this world in a puff of photons. Right. Okay, then. So the question of the day is... Taxi, Baxi. What? Uh, I don't know, man. We're nearly at two hours now. We've, gen- we've generally not taxi backseed when we're this far through. Um, and I am starting to wane a little bit. Knocking back four whiskeys might have something to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. I don't think we don't do two taxi backsies. That's one when it's early doors is all right, but I think we're gonna have to chalk this one up as a defeat. Oh, yeah, but I don't understand. Like, if you just said that you've had a quick peek and the right thing to do is to say, I don't know to the dude, yeah, well, it must have been one of the other two doors, then, mustn't it? What were the other two doors? That, uh, one with a, a moon on it, a crescent. One with stars on it, and one with computer written on it. Yeah, it probably was the computer one. Probably was the computer one. All right, well, that's we'll put that one down as another defeat. Oh. Well, I think that I thought that one was a bit balmy, if I'm being honest. It's batshit this one. It was. I didn't feel like you know, like in the past where you you um. You're checking out chests and you're going in houses and you gather up a few bits and you're like, have you got the rabbit's foot? Yeah, I got the rabbit's foot from earlier. It didn't feel like there was enough of that kind of going on. Yeah, it's seemed... a bit tame, isn't it? A bit kind of... Yeah, it all seemed like, here's a robot for you to fight. Okay, fight the robot. Done. Here's six robots for you to fight. All right. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Which I know, the book is called Space Assassin. I know we've been making that joke as we've been going along, but it's... Um... It definitely felt a bit kind of... You can see why they didn't reprint it. 
Yeah, it, it yeah, definitely had a uh, um no wonder you can get it for three quid on eBay. <laughs> 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 Faux yeah. shizzle. That's the truth. Faux shizzle. 